Hey everybody, welcome back here to Carillon Historical Park in Dayton, Ohio. Today we're going to use some old firewood to make a little stool, a little bench, a little gardening bench for you. It's been a mild winter here and I know you probably have some firewood laying around. We, have, we always have firewood here at the museum, but um, I found some really nice walnut. I thought we'd use some really simple tools to make a little bench and we're going to start off using a fro. Now this is an antique fro, we're not going to use the antiques, we're going to use a reproduction fro. These are made over in Sweden. So we have uh, some froes here we're going to use. And a fro is a wedge that you can end up using as a lever. And instead of just chopping at this with, a, um, with an axe, it allows you to be very precise. For this stool, we're going to need uh, four legs and eight styles. And so see how that, you, you want to choose some really straight grain wood. Use this as a, as a wedge and then, and then you just crank it over like a lever and it splits that up. So we're going to do that over and over again. Split this up to use uh, to make all of the components we need for this little stool. We've got, you want to make sure you have enough of it uh, to go down here. Crack that open. There you go. Okay. So we've got all of our pieces, all of our components here. We're on to the next step. So we're going to go from the fro. Let's put this down here using the fro to using an axe, a little hatchet. Um, now here, whoa, that's a really primitive one. Uh, this is an antique here, uh, Scandinavian in nature. Uh, really cool, but again, we're not gonna use the antique. We're gonna use, we're going to use a, um, a little modern uh, a carving hatchet here. And the idea is to, is to just shape this up. The fro got it to a square shape. We want to get it to a round shape for this little bench. And so we're going to go down. I'm just kind of scoring along the way. I'm going to get this sapwood out of here. Get down to that dark uh, wood. And just kind of do a rough round shape. Flip it over. Get into a shape to take it to the next step. So we're going to do this with all of our pieces. And then take it to the shaving horse. Okay, all right. So let's take these to the next step. And the next step is to use the shaving horse. Now the shaving horse, let me get the, let me get the big one here. Um, we've got all the, the styles to do. Let's do one of the posts. The shaving horse is a foot operated vice. So we have this, this head up here, which will clamp the wood in its jaw. And then with your foot, you can hold down this pedal down below and provide all the force you need to hold it steady. So when you use a, uh, a draw knife. Now, I have uh, a number of draw knives and shaves here. This is a uh, this is a modern one. That's uh, they make these over in in France, so you could you can find these still. Um, and uh, this is one. It's just it's it's a draw knife. So you're drawing it towards you while it's locked up in this in this foot operated vice. And it's just a matter of shaving down, taking out the, the rough areas from the hatchet work and shaving into a cylinder, into that round shape we're going after for the, um, for the legs, for all, uh, all of the pieces. So, do it so far there and then flip it over to the other side. This, so this is a modern, modern one. We've got a little older one here. It's a little wider. These. We're getting that, taking the rest of that sapwood down. Get this down. And go all the way down. Trying to make these cylinders. Okay, and this could be pretty calming work. You can sit here and spend your day at home making a little garden stool and making it out of something that maybe you have a piece of wood from a tree that came down that might be special to you. That's even better. This could be a, a gift for someone. So you can see how quick 
what quick work I can make of this with a drill knife and a shaving horse. Yeah, if you want to get real precise and make this down even, even further, you can use something called a spoke shave. This is a little spoke shave. And this takes off real fine, it's got a really fine uh, iron here. It takes off really fine shavings that allow you to really make this, make this precise to make this really smooth and not have a lot of marks on it. So a spoke shave, but you really don't, you, you know, you could, you could use just the drawing, not a, not a requirement to use a spoke shave. Okay, so we are finished with all of our components and I am just rounding off the top of these, uh, one of these legs. So now we're going to assemble all of the components and what we need to do that is to bore some holes. We need some holes in here uh, to do it and we're going to use a, an old style spoon bit. This is a favorite of chair makers because it doesn't have a little lead screw or anything that's going to poke through the other side of, of one of your uh, one of your, your posts or legs of, of a stool. So we use a spoon bit. Okay, so I put this in a little cradle. This is all ready to go. We got all four of these, and I've gone around and marked where I want the hole. So the little uh, little pencil mark there. And these spoon bits are a little difficult to get started because they tend to wander. What is nice about not having the uh, lead screw is that it doesn't poke through, but it is difficult to get these started. So here we go. Let's see how that works. It just slowly goes down. Now we've marked on the edge of this bit how, how deep we want to go. Okay, we have all our components here and we are putting them together. Now I'll point out here quickly that um, two things. One, that these holes that we put in the posts do not line right up to each other. So they're not, so they're, they're crossing each other inside the post. They're not going up where you'd need to cut a 45 on the end. Makes it just for a, a more stable uh, chair or bench. The other thing is that when putting this together, um, this, I, I've shaved this in almost an oval where it is thinner on this, this direction than it is on this direction, so that the tension is along the grain and not across the grain where we could split out this when we, when we piece it together. So as I put all these pieces uh, and assemble them, they should go together here. There you go. So here's the frame, little, little walnut firewood bench. And now we need a seat. So uh, a couple things we could do here. If it was a different time of year, uh, later in the summer, in July or August, we could use cattails that grow near the road and you let those dry out and, and, and twist them together and put in a rush seat. Uh, you could use a, the inner lining of bark um, that, that you could weave back and forth uh, for, for a seat with this thing. You could use, you could use rope if you wanted to. Uh, we're going to use a product that is kind of cheating here. It's a paper product that replicates replicates the, the cattails, the twisting of those cattails. And it's just a paper product that's, that's easy for, for, for folks at home here uh, to, to use. And we're gonna start the pattern of this seat. So we're gonna bring this in and we are gonna start a pattern where it comes up from the inside and just cuts around, cuts around here. Um, through so we have come up and we're, we're locking that in place coming around the other side and coming up from above I'm confusing everybody I know comes up and comes up on this other side so it kind of locks that in place and then you just repeat that pattern over and over again we have this whole full bundle that we're going again this came up from below came around the top Cut across that piece to lock it in place, and then bring this down under, down under here. And this comes up, and again, it comes back up to on top. Bring it around, and over, and 
The idea is to keep all this tight while you're doing it. All right, so we continue to come up from below, across on top, cross that one to lock it into place, like that. And the whole time you're trying to keep all this, all this tight, and then this one comes up from below again, and you repeat this pattern over and over again. Now slowly it works its way into the center, and you'll turn this over at the end and, uh, and just tie it off to, to, to finish that off. So you'll have the end of it. Actually, we, we're running out of material, so we need to do a little square knot with more material, and we'll make sure that knot is underneath the bench. But anyway, these are the kind of things uh, that you can see here at Carolot Historical Park during our open hours, and uh, the kind of thing you could do at home with some very simple tools. So again, thanks for joining us again here at Carolot Historical Park in Dayton, Ohio. Have a great day.